Hey, what's up, seventh graders? Mr. Carlson back here again. Uh, we're moving forward. We're going to be working a little bit more on some balancing equations today. Uh, what you'll notice is I've got three problems up here on the board. We're going to walk through each and every one of them. If you don't think you want me to show you how to do this, if you want to try this on your own, pause the video right now, go ahead and give these a shot, and then you can finish watching to see how we did it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you guys. We're going to walk through these three problems um, and try to figure out how to balance them out correctly. Now, one thing I want to make sure that I mention, number one, make sure you've got a, a periodic table with you, okay? Because that way you can tell exactly what elements we're working with within each and every one of these problems. Number two, use the wrap table, okay? Guys, I can't stress this enough. This is probably the best tool I can give you to help figure out and make sure everything's going to balance out correctly. And then number three, guys, when we start to put in some of these numbers to help balance out all of these different things, the numbers that we're going to be putting into these blanks, these big numbers or these coefficients that we talked about, they're going to be rather small numbers. We're not going to be using any double digit numbers. More than likely, the numbers that we're going to be putting into all these different blanks are going to be no bigger than a four or a five in most cases. We might get into some that have maybe a six, seven, or an eight, but you will not see any problems where we have to put double digit numbers in these blanks that's high school stuff. We're trying to keep it pretty basic here, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start walking through each of these problems. You guys can practice these at home as well. And we're gonna start with this very first one. When I take nitrogen, add it to hydrogen, I'm gonna get something called nitrous trioxide, okay? So what we have to do here, guys, remember when we balance equations is we gotta figure out what are the elements we're starting with, the reactants, that's on the left of this, of this uh, arrow right here, and then remember that the products are always going to be the same. We can't create or destroy anything. So when I look at this first problem right here, I see that I am going to have nitrogen and hydrogen for this reaction. Guys, once we know what we have on the reactant side, you can also put it on the product side. Now all we need to do is we got to figure out how many of each of these we have. So when we look at our first nitrogen here, there's no big number in front of it, but there is that little subscript that comes after it. That tells us that in order to make this element, we have got to have two atoms of this nitrogen. So guys, we are going to have two nitrogens on the reactant side. The same thing goes with the hydrogens. We see here there's no big number, but there is that little subscript. That subscript is tied to this hydrogen. There has to be two hydrogens here as well. Okay, when we go over to the product side, here's where we're going to start to have some problems. But I think we can figure it out pretty easy. There's no big number to attach to any of these, and there's no little number, no subscript following this N right here. That tells us that there's only one atom of nitrogen. How many hydrogens do we have then? That three is telling us that there are three of them. Oh man, this is going to be crazy. We don't have anything that matches. But I think what we're going to find here, guys, is that as we go through this problem, everything's going to kind of try to start working its way out. We're going to start with the first problem area. So here I've got two nitrogens. I've only got one here. I have got to fix this nitrogen so that it is going to match this one right over here. And the easiest way to do that is by putting a number two in this blank. And then remember guys, whenever we put in that big number, we've got to distribute it to everything. So we not only are going to multiply the nitrogen by that two, we're also going to have to multiply the hydrogen. What that is going to do is that is going to change things. We now are going to have two nitrogens here and that's good. Now those are balanced. But what we have done is we have now have to take this hydrogen and we got to multiply the three times the two. We've unbalanced further that hydrogen that's there. But what we actually ended up doing here, guys, is we made this a little bit easier for us to be able to solve. Because two and three aren't real good numbers, but two and six, those are really, really nice numbers when it comes to multiplying them out. So once we go back here, we fixed our nitrogens, we now have to go back and we have to fix this hydrogen. And I think you guys are, are good enough at math that we can figure out that whatever number times two has got to equal six to make it balance. And that number has got to be a three. So guys, our first equation here, this is the balanced equation. I'll erase those off of there so you guys can see that. 
Okay, that's equation number one. Double check your work, see how you did. I'm gonna erase this stuff right up here because we're gonna reuse this wrap table for the next problem, which is gonna start right now. Okay, so here we go, guys. Uh, when we take a look here at this next problem, problem number two, H2O2. You guys probably have no idea what this is, but you guys have probably all used it because when you get a cut, sometimes you put this on it to help clean it out. This is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, when it's put onto a cut and starts to clean it out, creates water and oxygen. Oh, wow, crazy, right? Okay, so what we gotta do here, guys, is we gotta start out by figuring out what elements we're working at. Remember, capital letters indicate a new element. These are both capital letters. We have two separate elements in this part. We have hydrogen, we have oxygen. And whatever elements we have on the reactant side have got to be there on the product side. So we gotta have hydrogen and oxygen there. We're channeling our inner Santa Claus here, okay? All right, the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out how many of each element we actually have. So when we look over here, we see there's no big number in this blank right here, but we do see that both the H and the O have little subscripts that are tied to them. We have two here, we have two here. That tells us we have two hydrogens, we have two oxygens on the reactant side, okay? Now notice, guys, on this problem, we don't have this plus something makes something, we've got this makes something plus something. So we've kind of flipped the order, but the problem's still done the exact same way. When we go over here, we have to do the exact same thing. We gotta count up each and every one of these. The little number two is only tied to that hydrogen. It is not tied to the oxygen because it doesn't follow after that. That tells us that on the product side, we gotta have two hydrogens here. But here's where some people are gonna get a little bit confused. We have one oxygen here, but we have two oxygens here. In order to get the total oxygens on the product side, we gotta add those numbers together. We end up with three oxygens on the product side. Ew, this is kind of gross, but I think if you follow along with me here, I think we can figure this out. Here's what I'm gonna do, guys. Um, in order to try to balance the problem spot, these oxygens, I gotta try to think of a way or a set of numbers that are gonna go very well together. You heard me say in the last problem that two and six go really well together. Well, two is a multiple of six or vice versa, okay? Two or two is actually a, a divisor of six and it makes a nice number. But guys, there's other numbers we can use and the number I'm gonna use, and this is gonna be strange, I'm gonna use the number four. Um, and here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna actually, in order to try to balance these up, I'm gonna end up unbalancing these two and then we'll have to go back and fix them at the end. It's not that big a deal as you can see, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put a two right here. And because it's a coefficient, a big number, I have got to distribute that number to both of these elements in that particular compound. And what I'm gonna do, guys, is this is gonna end up becoming a four. But look what it did here. Two times one is two, and two plus two gives me a four right there. So guys, I realize this looks kind of strange because I completely went against what I've told you guys. In order to start balancing this, I actually unbalanced this first one and I said, don't do that. But here's an exception because look what we're going to be able to do now. By going back over here and putting a two in this blank and then distributing it, we can balance the problem up very nicely. So once our numbers balance here, and here, our equation is gonna be balanced here, okay? All right, we got one more to go, and then I'm gonna have a challenge for you guys for tomorrow, and uh, hopefully you guys are gonna have a good idea of how to balance some of these equations. We will probably spend a little bit more time next week on some, but uh, next week is mainly gonna be about photosynthesis. You do have to have an understanding of balancing equations in order to make that work. Okay, so here we go. Last problem, number three. We take some sodium, add some oxygen to it, we get some sodium oxide is what it's called. So here we go, guys. The elements that we're working with first, 
Over on the left side, I've got an Na, which is a sodium. I have oxygen. And of course, guys, whatever elements I start with, they have to be there at the end, according to our law of conservation of matter. The only thing is we're just going to change the way that it looks. So here we go. Let's count it up. Do I have any big numbers here? No. Do I have any little subscripts that follow after the Na? No. That tells us that we only have one atom of that sodium right there. Over here, no big numbers, but there is a little subscript. So that means that we have two oxygens in order to make that molecule. We go over to the right side of our arrow. Here's where we're going to run into some problems. The reason I wrote the two there, guys, is because that little subscript right there is only tied to the element that it follows. So that means the sodium has two atoms. There is only one oxygen right here. Okay, guys, we need to start balancing, and I think we're going to be able to do this quite easily. Um, this might be one where we actually have to go back, and we might have to modify and change things a little bit again. Okay, so here we go. Um, my first problem area is going to be this one right here. In order to make that work, I'm simply going to put a 2 here, multiply it out. That is going to change that. We now have balanced up our sodiums. That's great. But here's where the problem's going to come in, because as I go to balance my oxygens next, I'm going to end up unbalancing this one. And it's not a big deal. We just go back and we fix it when we're done. I know I got to put a 2 here, but remember when we add those big numbers, we have to distribute to every element in that compound. That one goes there. That one also goes there. That means that I do change the oxygens, and now those numbers match, but I'm also changing the sodiums because two times two means four. So everybody see how that ended up happening? We ended up unbalancing this one now, but that's an easy fix. We can go back and fix that because let's imagine that we actually hadn't even done that. What number do we need to put in there to make the one match up with the four? That's easy. We use a four. So in reality, this is what our equation should read. Four, nothing, two. Okay? So that's balancing equations. That's just a little bit more practice for you guys. Try them out. If you are really still struggling with this, guys, there's all kinds of stuff online. You can go find some different examples to actually practice on um, because tomorrow you are going to be challenged with trying to balance the actual photosynthesis equation. So guys, we'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow. Hey, good luck with this. If you have questions, hit me up, uh, send me an email. Let's talk about it and let's try to get this figured out. We'll see you guys tomorrow.